Welcome everybody to this week's Department of History and Archaeology Research Seminar and I'm very delighted to be able to introduce to you our postgraduate researcher, our doctoral researcher, uh, Rihanna Phillips, um, who is uh, nearing the latter stages of her doctoral research and her mm -hmm. paper um, for this evening is called One Foot in the Grave, the Funerary Performance of Hobnail Shoe Deposition in Roman Britain. Over to you, Rihanna. All right. Well, Thank you for having me. Um, I have prepared some slides. I've only just realized I did not sort out how to quickly bring that into play here, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure given just a moment, I'll bring them up and we can get going. All right. So share, window, PowerPoint, all right, so give me a shout if you have trouble seeing anything. If you don't see any slides, let me know. You're good. All right, so one foot in the grave. Again, thank you for coming to my talk today. Um, as Howard um, introduced, I'm. this is part of um, my overall PhD research, very nearing completion, so, you know, I'm... Uh, trying to sound as sane as possible in these final final uh, months. But um, overall, I've analyzed 20, uh, 2,635 grave contexts from four major cemetery sites in Roman Britain, looking at funerary performance of a number of types of practices. Um, and so this is just focusing on one major part of my research, um, which is on hobnail shoe deposition. So um, I'm looking at the extended process of burial, um, and my interpretations focus on these uh, this evidence of extended interactions between the living and the dead, um, the actions of the mourners throughout this funerary process, and most importantly, this enactment of performance through these evocative actions of the mourners. So this approach overall identifies some neglected evidence of mourners' actions and their potential experiences. It reveals greater variation in practices um, in Roman Britain burials, particularly than previously presumed. Um, it contextualizes these actions um, and enhances understanding of these extended emotive burial rites. So previous studies of uh, Roman Britain burials have neglected some theoretical approaches to performance, which have become much more prevalent in wider archaeological research um, of death and burial. For instance, there's a bit of um, limited paradigms that separate approaches between um, inhumations and cremations and other types of divisions and data, which don't always reflect fully the actions and that spectrum of practices that went into each burial. Um, and it also frames burial evidence um, as in its ex excavated form as a final and most emblematic product of burial practices, as if that final result being excavated was the point of the entire process rather than um, focusing on the extended process and all the performances that go into commemorating the dead. Um, so my, uh, my research here, we've looked at um, particularly Sirencester, Lank Hills, and Eastern London to check um, the deposition of hobnail shoes and the performance um, enacted throughout these interactions, um, hoping to develop a more dynamic understanding of these burials and this practice overall, and also to provide some more in, in, enriched interpretations of the role of hobnails in extended funerary performances. So, as we know, burial practices not only serve to dispose of the dead, but also signify that removal of a social being from the living. Um, it's not only symbolic of wider beliefs and identities, um, but also demonstrates this um, interplay between 
ideas of death, the identities constructed of the dead, of the living, um, relationships. And um, these are some approaches which are um, a bit, as I said, absent in some of the current understandings of burials in Roman Britain. So through using funerary performance, materiality, agency of the body, embodiment, emotive um, performance and experiences, um, funerary performance, Sorry, funerary performance can be understood as the constellation of rituals imbued with cultural, social, and individual significance. Um, these actions enacted by mourners um, demonstrate their complex motivations and expectations through this disposal and commemoration of the dead. It's essential to in interpret all burial evidence with um, this performative framework, um, interpreting burial evidence in these extended sequences of actions um, and their mnemonic significance and experience for those involved. So not everyone received an archaeological visible burial in Roman Britain, so that just further um, emphasizes the importance of um, going through each individual burial and um, taking these contextual approaches to understand fully. So Let's see, I got ahead of myself a little bit. Sorry about this. Hobnail shoes. <laughs> so for those of you who are unaware, um, hobnail shoes, most common um, footwear description, we refer to boots made of leather. Um, this includes calcaeus shoes or soleas, sandals, caligas, boots. Um, they're again made of leather, hobnails pounded into the sole from the bottom. Um, they provide traction and support, um, and sometimes uh, when it's preserved, these are the only um, evidence of, sh of footwear put in, uh, put in the grave here. So this type of evidence is often glossed over in excavation reports. Um, when when uh, presented, there's a bit of a problematic aspect of determining the numbers, placements, whether shoes, whether or not shoes were, were present because um, not all hobnail shoes contained hobnails, or not all shoes contained hobnails. Um, there's a great number of variation. So between shoes, maybe a pair, didn't always have the exact same pattern, didn't have the exact same number of hobnails. So there's some issues there. We've got actual, you know, taphonomic um, factors that uh, affect the survival, as well as excavation that can disturb the positioning. Um, and placement of these hobnail shoes. Um, and most often, um, though current research is increasing on hobnail shoes, as well as depositional circumstances, burials, um, and, and other circumstances that hobnail shoes are found in, um, most often they're interpreted as signifying a sort of afterlife provisioning, um, which is a quite limited um, uh, in, of, of an interpretation when you take all the other elements um, into into play, into funerary performance. So I'll go over my uh, findings a little bit here. So my research looked at, um, as I said, 2,653 <laughs> graves overall for a wide um, swath of different uh, um, data data measurements, data observations, looking at um, all manner of aspects of burial grave contexts that could, when looked together separately, contextually, illustrate that extended process and performance um, through burials. So particularly with hobnail shoes, um, we found um, here overall in my data set, um, hobnail shoes, though they're one of the more common um, grave goods, they're still um, about 75% uh, of the inhumations that contain shoes or inhumations, um, cremations without hobnails, cremations with hobnails here, 1.2%, yes, 75% without hobnails in inhumations and 14% of inhumations with hobnail shoes specifically. Um, so I also looked at 
um, other elements of funerary performance, such as um, body containers. So for instance, in an inhumation, um, a body container affects the role, the process, um, it demonstrates different steps and stages and interactions with the corpse. Um, and again, whether or not the hobnails are placed on the feet or placed elsewhere in the grave before or after a coffin, when that body is brought to the gravesite or otherwise, um, these again illustrate that extended process and differing choices made in the commemoration of the dead. So we've got different body containers, such as coffins. Um, I also obviously looked at inhumations and cremations. Cremations had different types of um, body containers as well, and they reflect different um, points during the funerary process. So there was higher coffins used. So there's signs that hobnail shoes were burnt on the pyre, and then also signs that those hobnails are collected and placed perhaps along with the, the cremains afterwards in, an, in a further container like a ceramic urn or a wooden box. Um, but again, the fact that hobnail shoe burials don't have um, a, a common um, association here, you could have hobnail shoes and no coffin or otherwise, these aren't necessarily signs of um, status or wealth as um, differing choices in perhaps that performance and experience throughout funerary commemoration. So in inhumations, um, as I said, you would presume that most often there would be two hobnail shoes placed in the grave um, and, you know, worn on the feet, but this was certainly not the case. Um, there were plenty of uh, variation in the placement of hobnail shoes near the feet. Um, most of them yet were still presumed to be adorned. Again, sometimes I think this reflects a bit of excavation recording um, differentiation. Some reports were more likely to presume that when they were near the feet, they were likely adorned. Um, and then some reports were more specific in saying that they were just near the feet, not adorned. But again, many near the head, near legs, unknown, and not always together, sometimes in more than one location, near the foot and near the head. Um, one such example here, we have two hobnail shoes worn at the feet, um, but further hobnails placed in the hand. So this is potentially a shoe, a small shoe. Again, the amount of hobnails varies greatly in a shoe. Um, there's also potential evidence of um, perhaps token burials of loose hobnails seen. Um, data on this is a bit difficult because it's a challenge to discover a few hobnails in the grave um, on its own, but just demonstrating some potential variation here in, in what we understand to be hobnail shoes and hobnails in um, graves. So again, most often two shoes. Um, this uh, probably also reflects some um, bias in if there was one big pile of hobnails, this could have been um, two shoes that were very close together. Um, but there were very specific um, examples where there were three shoes found or one shoe. So this does demonstrate that two shoes wasn't um, always um, the, the, the norm. There were sometimes more than two or one um, shoe placed in the grave. So for example, um, this burial had two shoes near the grave, um, and then an additional shoe um, indicated by a boot plate up near the left shoulder. Again, so looking at the performance and understanding this, this versus the previous grave, this would be placement of the shoes perhaps at the grave side as a performance with all the mourners gathered around, specifically placed near the feet and not on the feet, which perhaps could have been done in advance if they were adorned, perhaps even in advance of being transported to the grave. Um, so this shows a sign of potential graveside interaction and um, sort of a significant moment in this process, as well as that deposition near the shoulder. So this is another example um, of a more common 
uh, practice than expected. Plenty of objects, but in this case, hobnail shoes that were placed outside of the coffin. So again, if something is placed outside of the coffin, this further demonstrates that within all the graveside rites, um, you know, uh, in burying the dead, then either a cover placed or, uh, you know, some of the grave was perhaps infilled and then shoes placed, in this case, outside, still near the feet, but definitely outside of the coffin. So just illustrating, again, that further um, interaction with the grave, that extended and performative moment. So in this case, if the coffin is nailed shut and concealed, then that interaction and extended performance is still continuing. All right, so, and this is just some um, beautiful, colorful graphs to demonstrate how even the rates of placement within inhumations and coffins is different within the coffin versus um, outside of ones that demonstrated outside of coffin placement. Um, so there's a, a, quite a high correlation with near the feet outside the coffin. Um, but again, significant numbers still near the head, near the torso and arms, near legs. Um, so, and the most difficult um, was ascertaining um, hobnail shoes in cremation rituals. So, unfortunately, this has a lot to do with data as well as techniques, um, scientific techniques of understanding whether or not the hobnails were certainly burnt. Um, and also the representation of data in site reports, they were not often um, pictured nor are hobnails represented on any of the um, representations such as here. Those nails are for the potential cinerary box that was involved in this cremation. And so without any details, um, but quite a few hobnails, uh, it's difficult to tell if this was perhaps a hobnail shoes or you know shoe or shoes placed in the, the, the cremation cut without to having been burnt at all. Um, or if it's signs of after um, the cremation on the pyre, deliberate selection and inclusion within the grave. Um, so again, wider research into that cremation process demonstrates a mnemonic and evocative performance so that understanding of deliberate selection and inclusion within the grave is very significant to that extended interaction and performance of cremation rites. All right, so overall, when we re-examine the evidence, knowing that shoes not always adorned, not always near the feet, there's not always two, um, there's qu quite a lot of variation in this, um, both the hobnails shoe deposition, as well as um, these extended interactions with the grave, with the timings, and um, choices made throughout the funerary process. Um, rather than presuming they were just, you know, worn for a journey to the afterlife, um, ideas on death should provide a backdrop to interpretations. Um, if anything, this varied evidence demonstrates um, these motivations and this variety in the methods of expression available to mourners in order to convey ideas through funerary practice, which further indicates that these complex and multifaceted ideas surrounding death, as well as these multivocal effects of funerary performance in commemoration. So the process of deposition itself was a significant and expressive moment of funerary performance within this extended funerary process. So future interpretations should focus more foremost on the evidence of this complex dynamic role of hobnail shoes um, in these variations in funerary performances. So challenging paradigms um, of what constitutes graves, what constitutes um, types of burials and types of practices is really important to contextualizing that full range of spectrum of burial evidence, this variation. 
Um, and in doing so, we can identify these significant moments of commemoration in these extended funerary processes, such as that role of hobnail shoes in the extended um, commemoration of the dead. So examining extended interactions, performative actions taken through preparing the body, transporting, containing the body, that visible visibility at the graveside and interaction, um, these all, um, this framework of performance can develop more dynamic understandings of burial practices such as this. So overall, as I said, this is just one piece of my PhD research looking at a wide variety of funerary practices such as this. So if you have any questions or ideas, feedback, please let me know. And thank you for listening.